Ahoy hoy everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Disney Dining Show. I'm Craig and today I'm joined by Panda and Erica because we are eating at Mama Melrose's. We're having a little bit of lunch here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Panda and I, I don't believe, have been here in a while. Erica, it's her first time, believe it or not. We're gonna see how much Italian food is too much Italian food for a day at Disney. So we're gonna do that in just a second, but before we do, I need to remind you, this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content and you wanna support us, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money and you get the support of one of the awesome Dreams Unlimited Travel agents. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free, no obligation quote. Now, I am very excited. I'm very hungry. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've eaten here. I just have very vague memories of it being good Italian food. I remember there's a lot of like vintage Disney's Hollywood Studios pictures in there because the backstory of this place is that Mama Melrose was an actress who she couldn't quite cut in Hollywood at Disney's Hollywood Studios. So she opened up an Italian restaurant instead and just started feeding people. I think that's the story at least. I don't remember. It seems like it checks out for this entire place. Anyways, you're here for the food, not for me giving you intricate backstory about a restaurant that you might have forgotten is completely all the way in the back of Disney's Hollywood Studios. <laughs> Let's go and eat. We have made it inside Mama Melrose's and it's been so long since I've been in here, I forgot how charming the aesthetic is. Like a bunch of years back, I went to this restaurant in Hollywood that was, you know, in a location that I'm not quite sure, but you walked in, it was dark, it was cavernous, and it just felt like you were maybe stepping into someone's like random home full of brick and tchotchkes hung all around. And that's the exact same vibe here. Just taking up a notch with the darker lighting, all the Christmas lights that are just hanging above the the plants, all the fake plants. I know there's a thing that Erica loves in here. I'll let her talk about it. She wants to, but yeah, I just, I really dig the aesthetic. And then having the music, you know, I feel like I could uh, see Frank Sinatra walking by any second and it would just totally fit in. I think he's dead. I know he's dead. Anyways, let's talk about appetizers. Uh, I went to our Patreon supporters to ask their advice on what to get for this meal. And I followed it for a little bit, but not everything. Appetizers, one thing that I did take their uh, recommendation on that they wanted to see me get, and that was the fried fresh mozzarella with marinara, ricotta salada, and lemon oil. Now, this is actually fresh mozzarella that it's either, you know, coming from a log or from a mozzarella ball, but it's basically cut, so it's a little two cylinders of fresh mozzarella that is fried very delicately. And when I say that, I mean, uh, I don't feel like it was over fried because cheese wasn't pouring out. It also wasn't completely melted all the way through, but it was done well enough that you could still tell that it was fresh and it wasn't over oily. The red sauce that it was served in, that is the marinara served with like everything here, it's not, it's not bad. So it's a small portion for $11, but you know, I, I was satisfied with it, but I did, I'm gonna spoil it here. Panda got a meatball, he's gonna talk about that in a second. I wanted the meatball and I was more impressed with that, but I'll let him share his thoughts. I've never been in here before, and from the minute I walked in, I was like, this is really cute. I actually really like the aesthetic in here. And what Craig was talking about is that I'm loving these flamingos that are right in front of me, hanging from uh, one of the panels. They're so cute, just hanging out in the Christmas lights. So, so far, I'm really enjoying the aesthetic of this place, the music. It's all really fun. Um, I'm kind of sad I've never been in here before. And I feel like, what were my parents doing? Bring me. Um, but to my appetizer, I got the crispy calamari. And for those of you that might have a dairy allergy, there's no dairy in this, so go ahead and order it. It was $15 and it was served with spicy pickles, which I did not partake in eating those. Um, and then fresh lemon 
And it was actually really good. You know, I was saying that the only thing I have to compare it to is the one I've tried at Olive Garden. And uh, this is way better. It felt like it wasn't too oily. It wasn't too heavy. I think it was fried perfectly. It was also seasoned amazingly. Um, I really, really enjoyed it so much. And it's staring at me right now. I feel like I want to finish it because I saved some um, for later. But they're so good. I highly recommend getting the calamari. So for an appetizer, I got the house-made Italian meatball. Uh, you know, I, I, I pride myself on my meatballs, so I had to taste it. You know what? Pretty good. Uh, marinara, fresh ricotta, and basil. Uh, pretty good, actually. I, I think the texture of the meatball is a little harder than I would have wanted, but the inside had a nice flavor. Not very cheesy the way I think of a meatball or the way mine are. But it was still a good flavor, and it was a really nice portion. He said five ounces. It's a pretty big meatball, so you can split it with someone. Uh, yeah, I tasted Craig's uh, mozzarella, and it was actually really good. Uh, yeah, it was a nice fried mozzarella. It was not... You could tell it was fresh and not like from a fridge or anything, so I like that. Nice crispy coating. Maybe could have been fried a little bit more, but still pretty good. I'm enjoying it. I don't remember if Panda said the price of his meatball, and I believe he didn't, so it was $13. And if he said that, I'm a crazy person. Anyways, on to the entrees. There's a lot of tough decisions to make here, and again, I let Patreon help me, but I threw away their opinions uh, like it didn't matter at all, like it was a trash opinion. I'm joking. Uh, I discussed uh, some of the options I was interested in with the server, and what Patreon wanted me to have was Mama's Italian pasta, fettuccine tossed with roasted tomatoes, garlic artichokes, butter, and white wine sauce for $23. You could add chicken or shrimp to that for an extra cost. Uh, I asked about that. I asked about the grilled bone-in pork chop for $28, or I asked about and, and not or. And I asked about the lasagna. The lasagna is not listed on the menu, but it is the special of the day, apparently every single day. Why it's not just on the menu, I don't understand, but that's not for me to know. That's for whoever works here to know. And maybe it'll be gone one day, who knows? But uh, it intrigued me. And of those three options, I was pushed towards the lasagna as the better choice. And the lasagna, uh, was a great choice. It was $24 and it was your typical layered lasagna with ricotta cheese, with uh, layers of meat, and then with mushrooms as well. So because of the, the amount of mushrooms and the meat in there, I felt like the texture of this was really pleasing compared to the perfectly cooked lasagna noodles that were in there. It was so cheesy, not just with the ricotta, but also the, the I believe, mozzarella that was in there too. Like, it was so, so cheesy. And again, served with a heaping amount of that marinara sauce that it was pleasant. And it, it just had the nice uh, balance of acidity with then all of the saltiness and the decadence of the rest of the lasagna. I really liked it, um, but I will be honest, looking at the menu, I could still come back here and get other things. The shrimp campanale, the charred strip steak, there's there's a lot on here, but enough for me. Let's find out what Erica had. For my entree, I got the polenta cake, mushroom and herb cauliflower. Um, that goes for $23. It's polenta layered with sauteed mushroom, spinach, and red pepper with a cashew cheese sauce. Let me tell you, that cashew cheese sauce was phenomenal. If you are a plant-based eater, you're gonna love it. You know, I always talk about I prefer cheese that's made out of cashews when I look at my plant-based cheese, and it was really good. Uh, this is one of those dishes that I feel like they actually put thought into this plant-based dish. It wasn't an afterthought. It wasn't just throw some things together. They actually, you know, put their minds together, made something that was pretty good. This isn't the only thing, though, that's safe for people with a dairy allergy. If, if you want to eat meat, but you have a dairy allergy, you can still get, let's see, they have the spaghetti bolognese, you can still get the sustainable fish, I believe you can still get, and then Mama's Italian pasta, where you can add either chicken and shrimp, it's still safe. But I was really intrigued by this polenta cake, so that's why I ordered it. Um, and I thought it was a lot of food for the $23, and I think it was completely worth it. The only thing is, when I was eating this, I started missing that cauliflower from Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. All right, I'll be honest, and I wish it was that cauliflower, but it probably wouldn't have matched with the dish, but all the vegetables on there, very fresh. I thoroughly enjoyed my meal. 
So I got the oven baked chicken a la parmesan. Breaded chicken breast with marinara sauce topped with melted mozzarella over spaghetti. It was good, but it wasn't great. I don't, okay, this, this dish was $27. For $27, it better be a memorable chicken parmesan, I think. The main problem for me was that the chicken breast was about an inch and three quarters thick, no joke. So nobody pounded it out, nobody flattened it, you would think, because then the flavor would be better. It would be, you know, this much chicken and this much breading with cheese. We didn't get that. The chicken breast was really thick, so it was good. It was a, a good quality chicken breast, but it wasn't memorable. The side of spaghetti, the spaghetti was overcooked and not as hot as it should be. Same marinara sauce that we found really good actually is on the spaghetti, but again, it was just good. I tasted uh, Craig's Parmesan, uh, Craig's lasagna Parmesan. And that was, you know, I, again, pride myself on how I make my lasagna. It was pretty darn good. And the mushrooms with the beef gave it a different flavor that I really enjoyed. And you could taste the cheese a lot in that lasagna. I could see why the waiter suggested it because he said people finish it. And I could see why. For dessert, I got the cherry chocolate cake. It's a plant-based dessert that's here. They use a plant-based chocolate cake with more cherry pomegranate molasses sauce. The cherries were really good. Um, I've had a lot of vegan cake and flourless cake in my life. And this one, I didn't mind the texture. It was actually really good. And it came with this beautiful white chocolate piece on the top. And of course, they let me know that the white chocolate was made out of vegan chocolate, so I could eat it. Um, but it looks beautiful. Uh, I really enjoyed the taste overall. And this dessert, let's see, was uh, $8.50. And just in case you might not know, that little green leaf next to it is what makes it, you know, readable that it is a plant-based option. So if you're worried about that, just look for that little green plant. Uh, it'll save you a lot of time and a lot of questions, but it was good. It's Your other option is a lemon sorbet. Okay, or a vegan chocolate ice cream or a, a vegan vanilla ice cream. Do this. It's, it's different because you can get the other stuff anywhere else in the world. Get this instead. I got the mini cannoli trio and being from New York, Long Island, I know a good cannoli. These weren't that great. It is an orange cream cannoli, a caramel butterscotch and a traditional cannoli for $10. Uh, not sweet enough. I mean, I could taste the cold cream, the ricotta, rogot, but it wasn't, uh, wasn't sweet enough. And the, I don't know, they just, to me, they didn't, they weren't reminiscent of a good cannoli dessert, but they were cold and crunchy. I did taste Craig's tiramisu. That was on point. Get the tiramisu. Let's see what Craig says. For my dessert, I went with a classic tiramisu. This was $8, and of course, it's layers of mascarpone. Uh, espresso soaked lady fingers topped with cocoa powder and whipped cream and uh, both Panda and I were uh, taking little bites of this and Panda was wondering what the uh, liqueur was that was uh, part of the dessert as is traditional with the tiramisu and he thought it was rum but the answer was Kahlua so be aware alcohol in this dessert even though it doesn't say it on the menu but what is there to say about tiramisu? Uh, there is good tiramisus, there's not so good tiramisus, and I would put this in the good one. I will not say there's a bad tiramisu. I have not had one yet, if that is an option. Uh, you know, it was a very nice portion. Uh, it, was a, it was a good size. Definitely could be split between two people, uh, just bursting with that espresso coffee flavor, but you know, if you're not a huge coffee fan, I think you also would maybe feel like some of the uh, the other flavors that you find in there, like the cocoa powder, would do a nice job of masking it. But if you know that coffee flavor, yeah, it comes through. I mean, I, I know coffee drinkers who, or I know people who won't drink a cup of coffee, but will go crazy when it comes to tiramisu. And I feel like this was one of those. It just, it was so, it was so, so good. It might even be my favorite part of the meal. Might have been the lasagna, I don't know. You know what, give me a couple moments. We'll hear what uh, Panda and Erica thought overall about their meal. We'll wrap this thing up. I mentioned on a 
previous episode when we were doing Eat, Treat, Trash that I had never been here before and this is something that I would probably trash. Um, I've been thinking about my statements and now that I'm here, I can say there's a lot that I do like. There's a lot that I do like. I love the atmosphere. I think it's such a cozy feeling in here, which is very opposite from what it feels like outside in the park. It's a nice little getaway. And I did enjoy everything that I ate. And I'm still trying to think, would I come out of my way? Would I recommend this to someone in my family? Um, for the eaters in my family who have a not so adventurous palate, yes. I would send them this way. It's stuff that they're used to. Uh, and I, I did enjoy it. I had a good time. And again, I love the atmosphere. I think it's just so nice in here. And I would come back. So I, I, I really don't think I could trash this place anymore. So all in all, I thought this was a, a good meal. Uh, I think Craig's meal was better than mine. Everything I tasted from Craig I liked better than what I ordered, which was the lasagna and the tiramisu. Uh, the kitchen is open. You can see them cooking. It doesn't look like there's a big use of microwaves. Everything's coming out fresh. So again, even though there's some things I might you know, disagree with, like the chicken breast being this thick, it's still good and I would definitely choose Mama Melrose. I think it's one of the better Italian restaurants on Disney property. I was really pleasantly surprised with this meal. Like I've said, I've eaten here a bunch of times over the years, and it never is disappointing. You know, there will be people out there who say this is not the best Italian food that you can find, but I do think this is better than most, like, chain Italian places, and I absolutely would recommend coming here. I, I will be back again at some point and I really enjoyed it. And uh, the only thing that I would probably swap out is I would have taken the meatball over the fried mozzarella that I had. I mean, the fried mozzarella was good. It could have been worse. They could have been cheese sticks. They were not cheese sticks that you find like at a bowling alley or a movie theater. Like it, it was good. The meatball would have been more in line with what I like. Uh, the lasagna though, excellent. And, uh, and yeah, the tiramisu is good tiramisu. So uh, the one thing I will say, you don't have to make this a three course meal. We were probably foolish. Like I would maybe say get one appetizer to split. Uh, maybe, maybe, you know, do an entree, uh, try to find something light on here. Everything's super heavy. Uh, and then maybe split a dessert. It was a very filling meal. Like there was no reason that we needed to eat as much as we did, but we did. And what I'm shocked about was the actual total price of this meal. It might be the fact that we recently eaten at, you know, Roundup Rodeo Barbecue as well as Cinderella's Royal Table. So I'm used to a meal like automatically costing $300, but that was not this meal. Uh, this one, after our annual pass discount, which took off $13.95, the entire price of the meal uh, before the tip was $133. And I, with the amount of food that we ate, I feel like that is a very, very fair price. Uh, you're definitely gonna be way under $100 unless you're eating a three course meal here. Yeah, and with, you know, even with the tip, once we get on there, we're looking at like 160. Not, not bad at all. I feel like for the most part, minus Panda's chicken parm, which I felt like that was a little bit of a mess. It should have been pounded very flat, used like a chicken cutlet, get it thin as possible, really have a lot of the flavor in the breading. That was the only miss. Everything else I tried was decent. So yeah, come here, check it out for yourself. Tell us we're wrong, I dare you, or don't. But anyways, that's going to do it for this Disney dining review. I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to support us more for watching this on YouTube, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave comments, questions, and video suggestions in the comment section. Uh, if you are listening to this, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us ratings and reviews when possible. And if you want to support us more, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free no obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. That's going to do it for us here at Mama Melrose's. We will see you again real soon with another Disney Dining Review on the Disney Dining Show. Take care. Bye-bye.